Ana Hinz Grandad. Hello everybody and welcome back to this week's vlog. This week you are joining us for the second part of the engine install. But it does, you've got, when they do the welding sometimes it gets a spot of welding inside the oh, right. threads and they just choose a PTFE tape and it makes it oh, really, yeah. so it's best to clean them out first. Yeah. Yeah, let's try and get the threads cleaned out first. I'm going to put the uh, valves in for the fuel shut offs. Oh, okay. And then I should do the grinding with it. Metal needs to go to clamp it all in place. Right. And down there for the battery, for the cables and that. Do all that today. Yeah. And then yeah. get the exhaust so it goes in place. That's got to be drilled, be welded as well. So yeah. if we can get all the welding ready, then Joe can come over and just weld it up and it's ready, Molly. Great. So what does that that one do? Does that take the water into the to re skin once for a return on the tank, this this is just one big tank here. Right. It sits in the water. Yeah. Well the water to the side to keep it cool, isn't it? Yeah. And the water just circulates around the engine and around the tank there. Okay. I'll say to H, sometimes in the sockets on the tank, it gets a blob of weld inside. Yeah. So when you put your PTF in, it chews it all off. Oh, right, okay. And then it leaks. Yeah, yeah. But if you use a liquid PTF, but it's set so hard. Yeah. You can't turn it. Can't just, turn it. No. Right. Nightmare to get them back out to get it to leak. It's all right, so. Right, yeah, yeah. I just screw them in a few times. Yeah. In and out, make sure the threads in are clear. In and out, and then in and out, and yeah. make sure it's cleared a bit. Yeah. yeah. It, like I say, it just churns up the threads otherwise. You were right about the windows, you know when I seen you over there a few months ago when you put some windows in the boat and you said put your windows in then go around and tie them up again afterwards yeah. because they, they, I went around ours after thought Jesus they're so loose again. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. yeah definitely, yeah, yeah. 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 The thing is on the window that they're having double glazing, some have double glazing, some don't. It's condensation the worst thing isn't it? Yeah. So yeah. I was told if, if you've got single glazed windows it's somewhere for the condensation to go and run out your boat on yeah. the window. If you've got double glazing, it's got to find somewhere else, and it, you know, it's got to go somewhere, hasn't it? So, yeah. Yeah. well, that's true with that. I don't yeah, know. yeah, that makes sense. Here, Ian's putting some PTFE tape onto, like it's called like a barrel nipple, and it screws straight into the, uh, one of the isolation valves coming off the fuel tank. Um, yeah, pretty straightforward, really. You just put your PTFE tape, obviously, as you can see. And you'll see him in a minute he actually takes the handles off because if he don't take the handles off he can't actually turn the fittings around as they're going into the tank. Are they quarter threads on them then? Yeah, they're quarter, yeah. Some's going into the Imperial, some's at... Yeah, they're quarter right there. Some's eight mil. Eight mil or something, yeah. Yeah. The, um, what, for the gas locker and your gas thing, what are you going to have there for like restrictor thing? What they have? We've already done the other gas, it's all there. You've done your gas. Yeah. So what have you what have you got on it uh, uh, to test it? I've got a bubble test and a test point. Right, on your bubble tester is 8 mil. But then you're going to buy 60. Mine was saying I've got a 10 mil bubble tester. Yeah, that's 10 mil. And, it, and, it, and it's 10 mil, so I have to get 10 mil to 3 eighths. For a little bit of short bit of, co of copper in. And that's how you do it. Yeah, it's 8 mil and 10 mil, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so I have to... Why they all the metro everything's imperial going yeah. into it? So yeah, it's a pain. Because they say you do keep the fittings down to a minimum, but you can't sometimes, can you? No, no. You've got to hold it to get onto some side pipe. Ian's just fitting two isolation valves onto the. Uh, two pipes on the left hand side of the, that come off our fuel tank uh, one is a flow pipe to the engine and one is a return pipe back from the engine and the third one which is is not connecting to at the moment which which I was going to use when I connect our diesel heater up to which is called the auxiliary and that will have a isolation tap on the same and I'll just run my fuel line through to the diesel heater from there 
and our diesel heater will run off the same one tank that we've got fitted on the stern of the boat uh, for the entire boat so we'll have the same tank for the uh, engine and, and running of the boat and also for heating I know some some boats have um, a separate tank installed purely and simply for the feed for the uh, diesel heater but we haven't got that on on our boat which is pretty standard practice anyway I think and our, our tank will actually hold about 200 litres so uh, we won't have a gauge on there at the moment but I'm going to look into that in the future marking out then for the uh, brackets for the fuel line and also the brackets that will support all the cable runs from the starter battery Ian's a man after my own art when he's sitting there working out the best place for brackets, measuring and then rethinking and then just double checking, which ain't a bad thing really. This is the uh, bracket that will be used for the cable run from the starter battery to feed the engine. Now all the brackets have been uh, marked and prepared, ready for the welding. Um, it's time for Ian then to just concentrate on getting the exhaust run sorted out. And it was a little bit tricky and involved a bit of measuring and stuff because um, there was a rubbing, rubbing strake on the outside that was very, very close. So that's why Ian's sort of taking his time and making sure he gets in the right place before he starts drilling any serious holes in the side of the boat.
Does that have brackets underneath to hold that? Yeah, I suppose it? it's welded. It's welded yeah. in the hull of the boat, it's welded. Okay. That part, that part goes through the hull of the boat, yeah. it's welded there, but then that, I've got to make a bracket here to hold it. Okay. Oh, so just, okay. Yeah. But the exhaust, the exhaust has got to go up and then down now. Oh, right, okay. And there's not much room underneath. They don't get much room underneath there to make that go up and down. No. Nah. Because if you make it go too down, it's too low. It gets well. So, as long as you've got 10 inches, this. Any height, ten inches. Don't yeah. You know, not on the outside. Yeah. It can be ten inches above the waterline, but it can, if it comes up here, that counts there. Yeah. Like sink, same as the right? sink. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing. That's it. Don't make them easy, these boat builders, do they? No. <laughs> <laughs> The rubbing strip on the outside. Oh, it's just in the. It's in the way. If I wasn't there, it's so much easier. It's... Could have tied a string on it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say that every time now when we yeah. uh, Drop we're something. using stuff. Yeah, should have a string on it. Oh. I was on the boat. Went to a, we was moored up in, in, in Newark near the marine near the castle, and there's a lock there. Must be a lock there or something. Yeah. So I, I was doing some next to the lock. And I dropped my drill and it bounced on the deck and went straight in the water. Oh, no. <laughs> so there was, and then also, when I was paid for my boat down here, um, somebody from work come to me, this lad who used to work with me come to me, and the, the sand, it dropped in the water while it was still going, and pulled it out and it's still going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it didn't last much longer, like, but yeah, I dropped it in the water. And then I painted the old side of the boat, and it bloomed at night time, so it all shadowed out. Yeah. A little bit all down here. Yeah. And this other lad to come to work. 
come from working here for the tin of paint and splashed it all down the side of the boat in it the wrong colour side just three times. Handy one day. Yeah, we should see a pile of old bits of wood we've got to keep in case they come in handy. Yeah, they do. They don't. Well, they have it here, obviously, yeah, but <laughs> first time. Well that's everything prepared in the engine bay, ready for the welding to be done um, hopefully next week. We're, we're sort of like um, relying on the weather now, so every time the weather's okay, someone will come across and do a little bit more in the, in the bay. Time now to uh, put the belts on and tension all the belts up for the alternators. And as I said on the previous vlog, we've got the three alternators here. One is a starter motor for the starter, one is for our leisure batteries and the other is for our 230 volt travel pack which I explained in the previous vlog. So you say Ian's just uh, tensioning all the uh, belts up now and getting them all lined up. Uh, he'll do a final test of these and make sure they're all alright obviously when he actually fires the engine up.
that's all for this week. We've just got to wait for next week now for Giovanni to come across. Brought the Italian stallion the Italian over for the job. Yeah. Yeah. There he is. Wow, well, we're talking about you. Yes. Hello. Is he? Are you all right? Yeah. <laughs> when are you? When are you back to do the welding? Yeah. When? Monday. Monday. Yeah. Watch maybe out, for a video. <laughs> See you later. Ciao, I say ciao, Jerry. Yeah. <laughs>